thank you for joining us today. We're here today with Dr. Chris Rosenberry. We're recording this webinar on April 10th, 2018. Um, Dr. Chris Rosenberry is the Game Commission's Deer and Elk Section Supervisor, and today he's going to speak with us about the Deer Management Assistance Program, otherwise known as DMAP. I'll turn it over to you, Chris. Thank you. The Deer Management Assistance Program, or DMAP, provides landowners with property-specific deer management options. <clears throat> the Game Commission manages statewide deer populations at the Wildlife Management Unit level. On average, wildlife management units are about 2,000 square miles. Within wildlife management units, individual landowners may have different management objectives or experience different levels of deer impacts than what is observed at the unit level. It is for this reason that DMAP was designed to give individual landowners the opportunity to manage deer on their properties according to their individual management goals. DMAP provides additional antlerless hunting opportunity within the regular hunting seasons. DMAP is available to both public and private landowners. Standard permit rates vary from one permit per five acres of agricultural land to one permit per 50 acres of other land. If landowners need more permits, they can request more than the standard permit rate by completing a management plan. For private landowners, this involves responding to five questions or requests for information on one page of the application. DMAP permits can be used to take antlerless deer in all deer seasons, including all 12 days of the regular firearm season. And finally, public land DMAP applications do require a, manage a deer management plan, and the public land deer management plan requires more information than is required for private landowners. DMAP applications are available online. The instructions and application can be found on the Game Commission's homepage under Quick Clicks. The applications are submitted to one of six Game Commission region offices and must be postmarked by May 1st. In most cases, the Game Commission will mail coupons to the applicant. The applicant can then distribute the coupons to hunters of their choosing. The hunters must then take the coupon to a licensed issuing agent to purchase the permit. Hunters are limited to two permits per DMAP property. And permits cost $10.90 for residents and $35.90 for non-residents. DCNR Bureau of Forestry is the largest landowner in Pennsylvania and they are the largest user of DMAP. DCNR uses DMAP to achieve specific goals. DCNR's goals for DMAP are to promote healthy habitat for wildlife and deer, provide hunting opportunities, support sustainable forests with minimum need for deer fencing, and promote healthy, sustainable forest communities. As a public landowner, DCNR is required to submit deer management plans with their DMAP applications. These applications are based on data collected from thousands of plots across the state forest. Data collected include a variety of measures of forest regeneration, wild plant presence or absence, forest conditions, deer browsing and impacts on regeneration, current and future management activities, and use of DMAP and hunter success rates. DMAP represents a small part of statewide analyst harvest. Since 2003, DMAP deer harvests have ranged from about 4,000 to 8,000 deer each year. In this graph, the small blue bars are the DMAP harvest. The statewide analyst harvest, the large red bars, have ranged from about 180,000 to over 300,000. Although DMAP harvest are a small percentage of the overall harvest statewide, DMAP harvest does vary by wildlife management unit. <clears throat> For most wildlife management units, DMAP represents less than 6% additional antlerless harvest. However, there are three units where DMAP represents more antlerless harvest. In 2F, in 2016, DMAP represented 14% additional antlerless harvest. In units 2G and 2H, DMAP represented 22 and 28% additional antlerless harvest. Data from Mark Deer indicate that harvest rates on public DMAP properties tend to be low, despite the larger percentages of harvest in those three uh, 
uh, units where there's a fair amount of public land. From our field work, particularly in Wildlife Management Unit 2G, where DMAP adds the most to the antlerless harvest, we see some of the lowest harvest rates. This graph shows data from a study we completed in from 2008 to 2011 in four wildlife management units. In this study, Unit 2G had the most public land and DMAP use, but it also had the lowest antlered and antlerless harvest rates. In other words, the lowest percentage of the antler deer in the population and the lowest percentage of the antlers deer in the population that were harvested by hunters. The previous slide showed unit level results and the obvious follow-up question is whether or not these results apply to specific areas where DMAP is being used. We can look at our current study on DCNR state forests where DMAP is being used to answer this question. This graph shows the difference in harvest rates of antler deer, the blue bars, and antlerless deer, the red bars, on the different study sites during the first two years of our project. In this study, there are two sites on each study area. One site has higher than the standard number of DMAP permits and is on the left side of the graph. The other side has the standard of one permit per 50 acres and is on the right side of the graph. On this graph, we can see two results of interest. First, antlered harvest rates are very low. The blue bar should be in the 0.3 to 0.6 range when compared to other parts of the state, yet they're around 0.1. And secondly, the antlers harvest rates are low, around 10%, even with the high DMAP allocations. Based on these results of individually marked deer in the field, the evidence suggests DMAP does not result in excessive antlers harvest rates on public land. These results from previous studies lead led to questions we seek to answer as part of our ongoing field study, including will higher DMAP permit allocations increase these harvest rates and what effect do these harvest rates have on the deer populations in heavily forested environments. In conclusion, DMAP provides landowners with deer management options. Landowners can use DMAP according to their individual goals. DMAP adds little to the overall harvest, but may increase the harvest on individual properties. DMAP applications and instructions are available on the Game Commission's website, and DMAP applications must be submitted to a Game Commission region office and be postmarked by May 1st. Thanks, Chris, for teaching us all about DMAP. And for those of you that are watching today, we'll make sure that that link to the DMAP program is in the description of the video below. Sometimes our quick clicks on the website change. So we'll make that uh, link available in the description below. We thank you for joining us. I invite you to view additional discussion with the board on this presentation during the March 2018 working group meeting. That link will also be in the description below the video. So that's all we have for today and we hope you'll join us for other webinars by the Pennsylvania Game Commission to learn more about Pennsylvania's great outdoors. <laughs>